Good morning and welcome to another video. Hope you're well. As you can probably see behind me, down the River Wye today. Come down for the day with a friend of mine called Miles, who you may well see in the video. Come down to do a little bit of barbell fishing, looking at the state of the river. It's uh, it's the colour of coffee. <laughs> it's pushing through. Hopefully, we can have a few barbell out. Starting to drop off water temperatures now, but uh, we're still hopeful. We'll uh, We'll have a few out. Obviously, looking at the river, it's going to be a day for the ledger, for the feeder or for the straight lead. And that being that, I've got my Dower Power Mesh two and a quarter pound test curve rod. I think that'll cope here. It's not going to be casting too far out because the majority of the slightly deeper water is on the inside here. So we haven't got to cast out too far. So I'm thinking my two and a quarter should cope well. I've got some feeders of various weights, but I think three, or three ounces or perhaps four in the faster swims should hold. I'm going to go on a feeder, I think, first off. I've got some dynamite uh, shrimp and krill ground bait to use. If that doesn't work, we'll perhaps go on the pellet feeder, but I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on exactly what I'm doing as we do it and perhaps what's successful and what isn't. Uh, Bait-wise, I've got the usual. So I've got some meat, I've got some halibut pellets, and my favourite hot fish GLM boilies that are, are glugging away, and I've made some, um, I've made some matching paste to go with them uh, you have to make your own paste because uh, there's no paste in the range i'll uh, i'll link you in up there if you want to see how to do that i did that in a separate video but uh usually pretty good especially in these conditions it's nice and smelly and the paste's breaking off the boil it's uh, puts lots of flavor in smell in the water so gear wise I, I touched on the rod and i've got my dower gsbrlt 5000 reel on there i'll stick all the info and all the gear i've got down in the description so you can go and have a look but suffice to say, I've got my standard sort of barbel running ledger rig on here. Again, I've made a separate video of how I tie this up. So again, I'll link you in up there. You can go and have a look exactly how I tie this up. It's very adjustable. I love it because it's really, really adjustable rig. You can change the effective length of the hook link very, very easily. I think that's it. It's, uh, I don't know what time it is. It's about quarter past, half past seven, something like that. It's very overcast, but it's supposed to go sunny today, which perhaps won't help, but... Uh, We'll see. Got your first light. Um, my experience this year on the Y, though, it's been fairly slow in the mornings and tends to pick up in the afternoon. But we'll see, won't we? We've got all day at it. We've got till it gets dark, which will be around half six-ish. Should we to stick it out that long? Probably will. But uh, who knows if it's terrible? Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps we won't stick it out that long. I'm sure we'll catch some chub and hopefully we'll catch some barbel as well. We're going to have a roving day as well today. Um, sort of. Uh, I had a walk up and down the stretch and sort of found perhaps half a dozen swims which we're going to rotate between during the day. So the bait will be going in during the day into these swims. And uh, as I say, fingers crossed we can have some fish. I'm going to start in here. A nice crease coming off this tree here. And uh, we'll drop a bait in the crease. See how we go. So as we're going to be roving about today, traveling as light as possible, I've just got a bucket with some bait in. My... Uh, a little tackle box with some bits and pieces in, you know, feeders, etc. But uh, obviously rod, bank stick, landing net, and that's your lot. Not even a seat today. I get far too comfortable if I use a seat, <laughs> and I won't move. <laughs> so, we will have a go in here first off. See what we can do. It's pushing through, as I say, but it's not too bad. We're going to ground bait feeder first, I think, because uh, that'll get some smell into the swim, or into the swims as we get, rotate them. So that'll be a good start, I think. Plus, I've got some old ground bait left over from last trip. I just tend to uh, to chuck it in the freezer when I get home. point wasting it. So we've got some stinky ground bait mixed up. Right. God, that water's not very warm. Right, I'll start off on a three ounce feeder I think. Should hold in there, I reckon. <laughs> I love seeing swans fly. Absolutely fantastic. And that noise they make. <laughs> You can 
hear the, the air moaning <laughs> at the uh, pressure it's being put under. Now, what I've done, I've, uh, I've suggested to Miles that he goes into one of the better swims on this stretch. It's certainly sort of renowned as one of the better swims, certainly in the summer months. Obviously, we're in autumn now, but it's usually a pretty good swim. There's a bit of a gully on the inside, and I've directed him to there. I think we, we definitely both need to, to fish that throughout the day in rotation. It's usually good for a barbel or two. There's also a swim below that, which is usually good as well. This stretch does see a lot of angling pressure, so... We might have to be a bit cute to get some bites. But we'll see. I was going to do the uh, water temperature, but I think my temperature gauge is in the car, so I'll have to grab it next time I go back up there. Right, we'll start off on a boily. Glugged boily. Now I've just got my standard barbel hook links on here. Again, if you want to do some uh, some extra reading, as it were, extra watching, I'll stick you a link up there. I'll stick all these links in the description as well of uh, how I tie these hook links up. But they work quite well with the uh, with this adjustable rig that I've got. And so we'll get some of this paste on. We've got a glugged boilie for maximum smell and attraction. And then on that, we've got some paste. So, fingers crossed we can have a few out today. That'd be nice. It's a nice day, it's nice and still. No wind. It's raining all the way here. And it's supposed to, supposed to go sunny, as I say. Right, I think I'm gonna have to stand up to do this. Very awkward swim we got. Trees above us, the bucket's floating away. We've got trees above us. Gonna have to be a, a bit of a fling out there. We go. Just wanna go on that crease line there. Blimey, it's wrapping into it. Well, we'll put a little bit of line out. Probably won't need too much. Right, we're fishing. Fab. Hopefully you can see the rod tip. Hopefully that feeder will hold. Don't want it bouncing around because if it does, it will find a snag. Be nice to get off the mark early. Then we'll give each swim perhaps half an hour, 40 minutes first off. We do perhaps, as I say, we've got half a dozen swims to keep rotating round. Like I say, I think perhaps half an hour, 40 minutes in each. And then we'll, we'll have a move. I'm certainly ready for a move generally after that amount of time. We've got a few casts in there first. We'll get a bit of feed going through this swim. Now, Miles, who I'm with today, is, uh, is fairly new to the wild. Took him guiding a couple of months ago, a month or so ago. We did some trotting. I said, uh, if he fancied coming again, we could go and have a session doing something a bit different. We've booked onto this stretch. As I mentioned, it's very, very popular stretch. We're not going to mention the name of it and make it even more popular, but... Uh, Suffice to say, it's October now, and this was the only day where no one was booked on in October. <laughs> That's how popular it is. Right, I'm not going to leave these casts in very long, for a couple of reasons, really. Firstly, uh, I want to keep some bait going in, and secondly, you never know, it might be stuck. <laughs> So I only ever give it 10 minutes, really, before I have a recast. Go 
Oh, it's tanking through that much. I can't actually feel it hitting the bottom. I'm trying to feel it down, but it's not happening. <laughs> well, I wish the fish were as keen as these flies are. Come and meet me. Chubby. <laughs> he was small chubby. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, we've had a fish after about 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, like I say, a very small chub, but it's a good sign. <laughs> Shows they're feeding. <laughs> Cracking. Go on, back you go. <laughs> Cracking. Well, that's good. That's a good start. Right, time for a move. I think not a lot going on in that. Flogging the dead horse. Another move. What's next up? A swim with two trees growing out the front of it. <laughs> but I have done what in, in the past. <laughs> Doesn't always fish. Like I said, I've done all right in the past, so we'll give it a go. Fish this stretch in the past before, as you can tell from what I'm saying but uh i don't come here too much perhaps a couple of times a year maybe three at the most i don't know it that well you know it's not the sort of sort of stretch i know in all conditions and i know exactly what to do i always feel it's a bit of a challenge coming here it's a bit of a a bit of a seek and find the barbel But it's very enjoyable, and it's a lovely day, as I say, the sun's trying to come out. And it's going to go right across in front of us, which is going to make doing a bit of filming a bit tricky. It's going to make it a bit tricky for you to be able to see what's going on, but we'll do our best. Right, I drop this out, not very far at all. We'll just flick it over the top there, just into the current, just there. A little bit of line out, we don't need too much out of here. Hopefully, hopefully that'll hold. Looks like it just about. We had probably a, a good hour in that last thing, maybe an hour and a quarter of actual fishing. I had to set up again when I got snagged up. So, you know, probably a good hour in that, that last swim nothing doing but you know we've put some bait in there now with a feeder we've probably had sort of eight feeder fulls gone in there something like that so you know there's no reason the bubble won't get onto that feed yeah it could be a bit of fun trying to land stuff in here there are these willows in front of me but uh by the time any fish gets in under my feet here should be well tired out, hopefully. we got to give it half an hour or so in here. Another swim just above this one that looks all right as well. So I've never fished before. So we'll perhaps have half an hour in there. 
I might go up to the top of the stretch as well. Because the, uh, the bailiff, right, there's a knock. The bailiff guy said it might be worth trying up there. At the top of the stretch. And several years ago, I had a few fish out of there at the top of the stretch. A nice swim up there. I sort of made my own swim, really. I was sat in a load of stinging nettles. But it might be worth a go. But the only other time I fished this stretch this year, there was a wasp's nest up there. <laughs> so I didn't stick around very long. I've uh, got my temperature gauge. And what a temperature. It is 10.9. So, not terrible. Not great. It'll be interesting to see if it changes during the day. Uh, no proper bites as of yet. Just off that little chub. Oh, it's 10.8 already. That's probably the uh, temperature just settling. Yeah, back to 10.9. So it's not, it's not the worst temperature in the world. The sun's come out as you can see. If I had three casts in this swim now, we'll uh, give it a little bit longer. So I've, uh, I've changed over now to a pellet feeder, a closed end feeder, block end feeder. There's some four mil pellets in it. Obviously the holes are big enough to let the pellets out, just enlarge some of the holes. So there's a little stream of pellets coming out. Just uh, thought I'd give that a go, since we're sort of two and a half hours in now, and uh, we've only had a little chub and a couple of knocks. Aside from that, thought it was worth ringing the changes a little bit to see if we can do anything. There we go, look straight away. Look at that. Straight away. Blimey. <laughs> I don't think this is a job. I just cast in. That pellet feeder. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell in this flow, but I don't think it's a job. Blimey. Let's get out of the way. God. I'll do anything with this at the moment. Absolutely nothing. God blimey. Absolutely nothing with this. Oh dear. Wow. I'm doing a lot. Doesn't need to in that flow. Blimey. and a quarter pound Tesco rod is bent through the handle as you can probably see
Oh, that's crap. I think we've gained any line on it yet. We're gaining a bit, he has it back. We're gaining a bit, he has it back. Rod is absolutely maxed out. I think this could take a while. Closer. Oh, my concern now is that obviously all this foliage we got in front of us right I think we have to get up <coughs> do a bit from up here <laughs> hopefully you can see what's going on Uh, a bit more leverage here standing up I don't think it's a massive fish what you don't really want him doing is getting in these willows here which is exactly of course what he's done <laughs> come on out where are we uh, he's not a massive fish but it is a barbel as we thought, he's given up. God. <laughs> Wonderful. Right, he deserves a rest, as do I. <laughs> it's no massive fish at all, but what a scrap. Right, we'll give him a rest down there. Well, there we are. Fantastic. Wonderful scrap in this fast flowing water and the barbel quite pale because of the uh, because the water's been up but, uh, it's absolutely fantastic no monster but uh, blimey what a scrap what a scrap right we'll keep, keep it out of the water we'll get it back so I had this fish staked out now for five minutes looking very lively Give it a few more minutes though, just to make sure after a scrap like that. Just had a, a good rest before we uh, we took it out and had a look at it. But uh, yeah, it's looking very lively. <laughs> Rare and to go. A couple of minutes, we'll, we'll send him on his way. Worth saying as well, it's important to rest them up where there's a bit of flow and a bit of oxygen in the water. There certainly is here. Not banging through, but there's there's some flow here. Right, I think we'll get her out into the river proper. Certainly ready to go. Gone. Wonderful. That's cracking. Right, we'll give it a bit longer in here, I think. So, as I mentioned, just literally switched over to a a block end feeder and uh, put some pellets in it some four mil halibut pellets and over she went might be a coincidence I don't know but we'd fished in here for about 20 minutes before and uh, 
it's not had anything. As I say, it was first cast in pellet feeder. But basically all I've just done is, is put some four mil pellets in the block end feeder. I've opened a few of the holes up just to let the pellets out a little bit quicker. But obviously we don't want them flooding out in these conditions. But the hook bait was a paste wrapped hot fish boilie. Oh, we'll see if that one was down there with his mates. And that little bow line out. That's what that sounds like again. A bit high up there. Don't need to be that quite that high. There we go. Fab. Right. Let's have another one. Right, I'm going to have a move. We'll go and uh, try another swim. I can always come back here later on. So I decided it'd be a good idea to revisit the swim that we've uh, had the only fish in today. Proper hard going today. Miles is struggling as well. Really don't seem too really interested today, the fish. I'm sure we could probably winkle some chub out, should we fancy it, but uh, I'm more fancying the barbell fishing to be honest. So I'm gonna stick with that. hope that perhaps this sun's not doing us any favours and uh, hope that we can have a few out as it starts to drop in mid-afternoon now so this swim's had a good rest up since we had that fish and then fish for about another 20 minutes half an hour afterwards and nothing else so it's, it's as I say it's had a, it's had a good good rest up and, Hopefully that means a few fish. Perhaps be having a munch on the, the feed that went in. We'll bring the changes again in here. We'll start off on the successful bait, the paste wrap boilie. If we don't do anything on that, we'll, we'll switch over to meat and pellet. Let's see what, if anything, We'll do the business. Right, come on fishies. Water's a little bit faster up here. Although it is slowing all the time. There we go. Fingers crossed. And toes. We can have another lovely barbell out. I think we'll give it half an hour, 40 minutes in here. We don't do any good. We'll perhaps we'll have a move up further upstream again, where we went earlier. Had lots of chubby rattles up there. Because this top half of the stretch does seem to be at least getting more rattles. We've had this fish out of here. We're getting a few more rattles upstream. Although probably chub. Miles is getting the odd one a bit further down, as I say. But water sort of slows as you get a bit further downstream. All right. We're in. I think it's a chub, but we're in.
think we are anyway. We are. We are in. Well, soon comes up trumps again. Blimey, it's starting to pull all of a sudden. I thought it was a chub then. I'm not sure it is now. No, I think it is. It's not fighting hard enough to be a barbel. It's trying to get in the edge, so I'm sure it is a chub. God, it's really trying to get in the edge. Come on, out. I can see him. Nice one, though. It's in the tree, of course, because he's a chub. Let's go and get him. Oh, he's a nice one. That's a chub. Oh, blimey, that is a chub. No wonder he's pulling back. <laughs> well, I said I didn't mind catching some nice chub, and that's certainly a cracker. How's about that? <laughs> The afternoon sun, wonderful. Long and fairly lean, but uh, that's a cracker. Absolute cracker. Well, I'm glad we had a move. That's cracking. I'll give him a minute down there to sort himself out. While we sort ourselves out. Ducks are having a right old scrap over there. Right, he's certainly recovered. We'll get him back. There you go, chap. Off you go. That's great. Well, a few minutes in the right place. Worth a long time in the wrong place. <laughs> Do you seem to want to be in this swim? I'll give it another half an hour or so. Do you just fancy having to go up the top end there again before we leave? While we get the chance, I mean, we're, we're not anywhere near leaving yet, in particular. I'm just sort of mixing up the ground bait and the pellets at the moment and just doing a bit of a sort of a pellet sandwich. Well, hopefully his barbel mates are down there as well. No, nothing doing. It's going to have dusk in there. In the barbel swim. <laughs> the only swim that's kicked up a barbel today. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. So that's me done for the day. The pheasants are off to roost. The sun's gone down. It's, it's actually a lot darker than it looks on there. It's uh, it's not far off. Fully dark now and uh, nothing else doing at all. Nothing else doing. Could probably fish for another 10 minutes or so, something like that. But um, there's nothing happening. Absolutely nothing at all. It's been, I, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew it was going to be easy coming off this, this high water. So like I mentioned earlier, I have found when it's dropping, it doesn't fish well for the barbel. They tend to have a good feed up as it's on the way up and when it's peaking. And then as it drops off, they seem to switch off. That's my experience anyway. And uh, so it seems to be today. We've uh, fit it back two days late, unfortunately. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, the bailiff chap told me that Saturday was when it was four and a half meters up, it's about two and a half meters up now, four and a half meters up, it was uh, it was cracking, but uh, I'm not at all surprised. But yeah, I think the way it's fished today, I, I feel fortunate to have caught a barbel, to be honest. Um, I've not spoken to Miles, I'm just looking down there, see if he's coming back up, he's not coming back up yet. Um, I've not spoken to him for 
perhaps the last hour, hour and a half, and uh, he just had one chub. So I do feel very fortunate to have had that barbel, to manage to get that barbel out. But, God, I've covered several swims twice and probably half a dozen swims in total. So probably we've probably moved about 10 times today. Um, the, I can't think of anything else I could have done. I've tried everything in my armoury today. And um, we just had that one barbel bite. The only thing I perhaps we could have done differently is fish the pool at the bottom. But I have fished it in these similar sort of heights and these similar conditions before and not done any good down there. But uh, perhaps I shouldn't assume, my wife tells me I shouldn't assume. So perhaps I shouldn't have assumed, perhaps we should have had a, an hour down there. But uh, a bit late now. Now, I am off in a few days down to Falmouth to stay in Falmouth for a few days with the family. I'm going to take the gear with me, obviously. Fancy doing a bit more mullet fishing. Um, perhaps some wrasse fishing who knows what else we might do when we're down there but uh, whatever I do you will see it in the next video but for now thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed that tight lines enjoy your own angling many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support and I'll see you all again very soon